Korea is actively promoting the development of the National Innovation Cluster for mutually beneficial growth and balanced development among regional communities. The through this initiative, the South Korean government has succeeded in attracting investment while forming a large-scale industrial ecosystem driven by private investments and new industries. 천안 공전이 100년 역사상 가장 잘 투자하고 성공적인 모델로 에드워드 내에서 인정을 받고 있습니다. I think that South Korea is, is really in a good position. The reason is because I think there's a lot of support from the government. South Korea is carrying out various efforts to attract investments, such as creating a business climate that is tailored to the unique characteristics of each city or province. Find the answers you seek regarding investment in Korea's specialized industries at Invest Korea Week 2021. Nearly two years since the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic, the global economy is poised to stage a robust post-recession recovery, but the rebound is expected to be uneven across countries and across industries. In that sense, many look to Korea's regionally specialized industries as one of key factors that sets this economy apart in the post-pandemic recovery. Welcome back, everyone. I'm Kanyong Jennifer Moon, and this is part two of Invest Korea Week 2021, brought to you by Korea's Ministry of Trade, Investment and Energy, Korea Trade Investment Promotion Agency, and Arirang TV. Here, we'll rediscover South Korea's potential as an attractive investment destination in the post-COVID-19 era, as well as new opportunities. Equinor is honored to attend the 17th Invest Korea Week. We are a broad energy company with our home base in Norway. But Korea and Norway have strong ties going back many, many years. We are active trading partners and we have long shorelines and seas with harsh conditions. Many of Equinor's offshore installations are in fact built in Korea and will benefit Norwegians for generations to come. We also share the ambition to be leaders in the energy transition and achieving carbon neutrality by 2050. We have watched with high interest how you have applied innovation and technology to achieve safety and well-being for all. Equinor and Korea have been partners for many years. We have experienced firsthand Korea's ability to drive innovation and change when change is needed to advance to the next level. I'm confident that the energy industry in Korea will transition into the next era, providing sustainable energy for all Koreans. Once again, congratulations to Invest Korea Week. I wish you the best of luck and success in hosting this important event. Dear participants of Invest Korea Week 2021, I'm Spiros Martinez, CEO of Ocean Winds. Ocean Winds is a joint venture created by EDP Renewables and NZ to leading companies in the European and global renewable energy business. At Ocean Wind, we develop, build and operate offshore wind farms around the world. As of today, Ocean Wind has over 5,000 megawatts in advanced development, construction or operation in the most of the world's most important markets for Ocean Wind, such as United States, United Kingdom, France or Belgium. Ocean Wind has been present in Korea since 2019, when we acquired our first project in the country, Korea Floating Wind, a mega project of 1.2 gigs off the coast of Ulsan. Since then, we have significantly expanded our portfolio of projects and built a top-tier local team. Our two years operating in Korea have been an extremely positive experience. At Ocean Winds, we consider Korea as one of the best countries to do business in the world. The ambition of Ocean Winds is to continue investing in Korea for many years and we expect that Korea will soon become our fourth largest market in the world. We also want Korea to become Ocean Winds' main hub in Asia and our growth platform for other countries in the same region. 
we believe that Korea is one of the best countries to do business in the world because it has a clear leadership from its central government, a professional and efficient administrative body. Korea also has absolute respect to the rule of law and is open and used to dealing with international investors. Lastly, Korea has an extremely qualified service provider chain, an extremely competitive supply chain, committed and hardworking professionals, and cutting edge infrastructure. I would also like to mention the importance of CONTRA as partner and companion in this long process. CONTRA is a fundamental part of the success of ocean winds in Korea. I take this opportunity to invite other international companies to follow us on this passionate journey. I hope you take the most advantage of Invest Korea Week 2021, which has a very deep and well-structured agenda. I also hope to have the opportunity to meet you soon in Korea. Well, thank you all for the support and the kind remarks. A key pillar of the Korean New Deal that's drawing the attention of foreign investors as of late is balanced regional development. Plans have been getting implemented to designate and expand special regulatory free zones and select key strategic industries for each free economic zones to achieve a better balance in development across the country. Closing the development gap across regions may be key in shaping the future of an economy. ね、안녕하세요。国家機能발전위원회총괄기획국장김선기입니다。어、지역특화산업포럼에함께하게되어매우기쁘게생각합니다。먼저균형발전관련지역몇곳을소개하겠습니다。여러분、이곳은어디일
국가기능발전 5개년 계획을 수립했습니다. 문재인 대통령은 무엇보다 지역의 성장판이 열려야 국가경제의 활력이 돌아온다고 강조했습니다. 정부와 지자체는 지역의 성장판을 열기 위해 보다 강력하고 정교하게 균형발전 정책을 추진하고 있습니다. 어, 무엇보다 대통령이 현장에서 지역별 미래 신산업 육성 전략을 보고받고 중앙부처로 하여금 이를 적극 지원하게 하였습니다. 먼저 지역경제 투어와 주역균형 뉴딜 투어를 통해 지역의 미래를 이끌어갈 신산업 비전과 전략이 다수 수립되었습니다. 전국 11개 지역이 참여하는 지역경제 투어는 대한민국 각지의 혁신의 새싹을 키우기 위한 노력입니다. 이어서 신안, 부산, 보령과 울산 등 4개 지역에서 진행된 주역균형 뉴딜 투어는 탄소중립과 초강력 사회 역시 지역이 이끌겠다는 다짐입니다. 대통령의 연이은 현장 행보는 한국판 뉴딜 등으로 이어지며 지역별 미래 신산업이 속속 생겨나고 성장이 가속화되는 발판이 되었습니다. 둘째, 지역산업 혁신에 필요한 R&D, 도로철도 등 23개 지역 대표 사업에 총 25조 원이 투입되는 국가균형발전 프로젝트가 추진되고 있습니다. 올해엔 사업예산 7,474억 원을 확보해 추진 중입니다. 분야별 투자 내역을 보시면 지역 전략산업 육성, 인프라 확충, 광역교통과 물류망 구축, 마지막으로 지역주민의 삶의 질 제고 등 지역발전의 기틀이 될수 있지만 경제성 부족 등으로 추진이 지연됐던 사업들이 에타 면제 등을 통해 빠르게 추진될 수 있었습니다. 셋째, 지역이 주도하는 한국판 뉴딜을 위해 지역균형 뉴딜을 적극 추진하고 있습니다. 지역균형 뉴딜은 첫째, 한국판 뉴딜의 지역사업, 둘째, 지방비로 추진하는 지자체 주도형 사업, 그리고 셋째, 공공기관 재원으로 추진하는 공공기관 선도형 사업으로 구성되고 있습니다. 주역균형 뉴딜을 통해서도 다양한 미래 신산업이 육성되고 있습니다. 광주에서는 국가인공지능 융복합단지를 조성하고 있습니다. 인공지능 국가전략에 맞춘 혁신적 산업 생태계를 조성해 인공지능 중심도시 광주를 실현하기 위해서입니다. 전남은 세계 최대 규모의 해상풍력단지를 조성하고 있습니다. 2030년까지 민간자본 48조 원을 투입해 450개 기업을 유치하고 대한민국이 세계 5대 해상풍력 강국이 되는 데 기여할 것입니다. 부산은 파워 반도체 클러스터를 조성하고 있습니다. 전기차 시장이 커짐에 따라 배터리 사용 시간을 늘려주는 파워 반도체를 지역의 신성장 동력으로 육성하기 위해서입니다. 충남은 자율주행, 도심 항공 같은 미래 모빌리티 산업을 육성하고 있습니다. 분야별 인재 양성과 시험평가 센터 구축, R&D 캠퍼스 조성을 통해 미래 모빌리티의 상용화에 앞장설 계획입니다. 네 번째, 정부는 노사 민정이 협력해서 지역 산업의 돌파구를 마련하도록 지원해 왔습니다. 노사가 조금씩 양보해 미래차, 해상풍력 등 미래 신산업을 키울 수 있도록 지원 근거를 마련하고 정보와 컨설팅을 제공했습니다. 특히 광주에서 시작된 상생형 일자리 협약 체결은 국가정책으로 격상되어 밀양, 대구, 구미행성, 군산, 부산, 신안 등 8곳으로 확대되었습니다. 광주형 일자리는 광주시, 현대차 등 노사민정의 협력관계를 토대로 23년 만에 국내 완성차 공장을 설립하고 경영 SUV 캐스퍼를 시판하고 있습니다. 새로운 일자리 모델이 지역에 성공적으로 정착했다는 평가와 함께 온라인 판매, 반값 수준의 임금 등 새로운 도전을 통해 한국 자동차 산업의 새로운 바람을 불러일으키고 있습니다. 다섯째, 정부는 지역과 기업이 직면한 덩어리 규제를 완화해 미래융합 신산업의 성장 속도를 높이기 위해 노력하고 있습니다. 2019년 세계 최초로 지역 단위 규제 특례 제도인 규제자유특구 제도를 도입하여 2021년 7월까지 총 28개 특구를 지정하였습니다. 철강산업으로 유명한 경북 포항은 2019년 7월 
배터리 리사이클링 규제자유특구로 지정된 것을 계기로 2차 전지산업의 메카로 떠오르고 있습니다. 기업들의 대규모 투자가 잇따르고 정부도 배터리 자원순환 연구지원센터를 구축하는 등 산업 생태계의 경쟁력 향상을 지원하고 있습니다. 여섯째, 과거보다 유연하고 강력한 초강력 협력을 지원하고 있습니다. 산업 분야에서는 전기차, 바이오, 첨단 신소재 등 6대 신산업을 중심으로 세네개 지역이 모여 협력 프로젝트를 진행하였습니다. 전기 자율차 분야를 보면 대구와 경남이 전장 부품을 개발하고 경북과 세종이 자율주행 부품과 시스템을 개발하는 방식입니다. 이를 통해 각 지역이 신산업 분야의 밸류체인 상에서 신규 일자리를 마련하고 산업 경쟁력을 높일 수 있었습니다. 내년에는 부산, 울산, 경남이 동남권 특별지방자치단체로 재탄생하고 수도권 수준의 경제생활권 조성을 위한 노력이 본격화될 전망입니다. 마지막으로 국가균형발전종합계획인 5개년 계획의 재원이 역대 최대 규모로 증가하였습니다. 여기에는 지역 주도의 산업 생태계를 조성하기 위한 다양한 지원책이 포함되었습니다. 예를 들어 지역별로 혁신도시와 산업단지 등을 묶어 국가혁신 클러스터로 지정해 신산업 실증과 핵심기업 유치를 추진하고 있습니다. 경북 국가혁신 클러스터의 경우 배달, 우편 등에 활용되는 초소형 전기차 부품을 국산화하여 신규 일자리를 만들고 교통안전 스마트밸리의 가능성을 높였습니다. 강원 국가혁신 클러스터는 디지털 헬스케어 기업을 다수 유치하여 강원도의 의료기기 산업 클러스터의 경쟁력을 높이는 데 기여하였습니다. 여러분, 산업의 지형이 미래 신산업을 중심으로 급격히 변화하고 있습니다. 정부는 지역이 주도적으로 준비하고 인재와 기업을 유치할 수 있도록 계속 지원해 나가겠습니다. 여러분께서도 글로벌 혁신 강국 대한민국과 함께 미래를 밝혀나가길 기대합니다. 감사합니다. The key to balanced national development and creating new markets is regional growth. Let's find out more about the new industries in South Korea that will lead the country's regions into a new future. Pangyo Techno Valley is a high-tech industrial complex located in Gyeonggi Province, South Korea. Pangyo Techno Valley is called Korea's Silicon Valley and was established in the early 2000s. Pangyo Techno Valley is an ITBT, CT, NT, and 첨단 업종이 모여 있는 R&D 단지라고 보시면 되고요. 1, 2 판교에는 1,700여 개 기업이 모여 있는데요. 이중 92%가 첨단 업종입니다. With a high concentration of high-tech firms and research facilities, Pangyo has become a hub for the exchange of ideas between people and startups, setting a foundation for innovative growth. From support for tenant space to providing customized programs for individual firms and also consulting for matching global investors, the province has fostered the industry in various ways. Different specialized industries have been assigned to each district of which there are now three Panyo districts and the most recent one being three Panyo. 일판교에는 IT 중심의 첨단 업종을 위주로 조성 완료되었고 이판교는 AI 기반의 자율주행 기업들이 입주해 있는데요. 특히 자율주행 자동차 활성화를 위한 기반 조성과 도로 기반 실증을 추진하고 있습니다. Kyungi Autonomous Driving Center was established to strengthen the competitiveness of the nascent self-driving industry. It operates and supports a pilot project. 판교라고 하면 국제적으로 큰 IT 도시인데 일반 차들이 혼재된 이런 환경에서 자율주행과 관련된 생태계 조성을 마련하고 구축하고 있는 인프라를 최대한 활용하실 수 있다는 게 가장 큰 강점이지 않나 이렇게 생각을 하고 있습니다. Zero Shuttle, an autonomous public transportation service, is an operation to demonstrate self-driving tech and gather data. This year, Gyeonggi designated a special regulatory zone for self-driving demonstrations. 자율주행의 기본 원리는 이제 인지 판단 제어라고 보실 수 있고요. 
이제 사람의 눈의 역할을 대신할 수 있는 다양한 인지 센서들이 달려 있고요. 정밀지도 기반으로 실시간 들어오는 인지 센서의 데이터들과 어, 매칭을 해서 경로 생성이라든가 판단을 처리를 해서 그 실도로 환경에서 지금 자율주행을 이어 나가고 있습니다. All driving data of the Zero Shuttle is monitored in real time by closed circuit cameras linked to the integrated control center. This makes it possible to provide a safe self-driving service. The Gyeonggi Autonomous Driving Center supports the business activities of self-driving companies. Various firms that make sensors and simulators have set up shop here. I visited a company that develops self-driving software while also running an R&D center in Pangyo. 3D 센서로 해석하는 소프트웨어를 만들고 있고요. 3D 컴퓨터 비전이라고 하고 있고 아이다 같은 3D 센서는 사진을 찍을 때 색깔 정보를 찍는 게 아니라 사람의 위치, 형상 정보를 사실 찍는 센서예요. 레이저를 쏴가지고 반사되는 속도를 통해서 그 거리를 알아내는 거리 측정용 센서라고 보시면 될것 같아요. Founded in 2017, Soul Robotics is a startup that works together with German car maker BMW. A German consulting firm judged Soul Robotics technology as being number one in 3D LiDAR technology. BMW is a very good company. The project size is about 170억. The LiDAR is also included in the car. If you want to go to the car, you want to go to the car. You want to go to the BMW project. People from different nationalities work together and adeptly handle overseas business matters. What is the biggest advantage of running a self-driving startup in South Korea? I think that South Korea is, is really in a good position to become um, one of the leaders in autonomous driving. And the reason is because I think there's a lot of support from the government. They really provide a lot of support directly to our company and also in various um, events and programs and, and, and opportunities. Hangyo Techno Valley is the main part of the company of the company. It is the main part of the company of the world trend. It is the main part of the company of the world. It is the main part 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 of the world. This area is building a new business as a regionally specialized industry. Earlier this year, South Chungcheong Province designated a place for a specialized complex for display materials, parts and equipment which gave a boost to related industries. 충남은 천안 아산을 중심으로 디스플레이 클러스터가 구축되어 있습니다. 관련 전후방 산업 간 긴밀한 그 협력 네트워크를 통해서 잠재력을 보유한 지역입니다. South Chungcheong Province had an industry cluster for existing display manufacturers. After the creation of a specialized complex, the province has improved its competitiveness in the materials, parts, and equipment industry while driving growth in the supply chain. South Chungcheong Province has become the country's top province for foreign investments and energetically woos investors. As a diverse group of foreign firms are coming to the region, the province has designated seven foreign investment zones situated in complexes and 19 foreign investment zones for individual businesses. Edwards, Korea has based their manufacturing plant in Cheonan, South Chungcheong Province. The company makes vacuum pumps used in the chip making process. How did this British firm that has been around for 100 years choose Korea to invest in? 수도권과의 근접성, 인적 물적의 그 풍부함, 우수함, 그 다음에 중요 고객의 근접성 한세 가지 정도가 충청남도가 해외 투자 기업들이 투자를 하는데 굉장히 중요한 매력적인 포인트가 되지 않았나 그렇게 판단을 하고 있습니다. Including Chungnam Province's support for foreign companies, other companies have also benefited from the creation of the chip-related industrial complex. This cluster is designed by the development of the infrastructure, the information, or the 
방향이나 전략들을 서로 공유를 함으로 인해서 좀더 시너지를 얻게 되고 방향을 수정해 가거나 대비를 해 가고 있습니다. The construction of a new plant in Asan started this year after having built a plant in Cheonan. Edwards Korea is trying to expand its business by relocating large-scale production facilities to South Korea, which will become the company's main global manufacturing base. 천안 공장을 세운 다음에 한 2천억 정도를 투자를 했어요. 100년 역사상 가장 잘 투자하고 성공적인 모델로 에드워드 내에서 인정을 받고 있습니다. 결국에는 이제 퍼포먼스인데 아프레이션 엑셀런스가 타 지역 대비 월등히 뛰어나서 계속적으로 투자를 하는 데 역할을 했다고 그렇게 판단을 하고 있습니다. The world's third largest silicon wafer manufacturer, Global Wafers, a Taiwanese company, also has a wafer production plant in Cheonan. Silicon wafers are key materials for making integrated circuits. After building their first plant in Cheonan in 2019, the company has expanded it further with a second plant. Cheonan J2 공장의 총 투자 금액은 약 4,760억 정도 되고요. 외자 유치는 2억 불. 또 여기에 천안 시청과 충청남도 산자부가 7년간의 세제 혜택과 현금 지원을 해줌으로 해서 완공하게 되었습니다. With the expanded capacity of the second plant, 9% of the 65% of silicon wafers that South Korean chip companies import can now be sourced domestically. 반도체 산업은 시간의 다툼입니다. 공사가 시작할 때 인허가라든지 이런 것은 원스톱으로 걸림돌이 없이 많은 지원을 받았고요. 그렇게 함으로써 신공장이 지난해부터 공개도 올라 돌아가고 있다는 것은 전 세계적으로 봐도 다른 사이트에 굉장히 그 모범이 되고 발목할 만한 성과다라고 평가를 하고 있습니다. 내년에도 10개 사 이상을 유치하는 것이 저희들의 목표입니다. 온라인과 오프라인 전략을 적절히 활용해서 애프 기업을 계속 유치할 계획을 가지고 있습니다. Late last year, Korea's Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy unveiled what's dubbed the Free Economic Zone 2.0, 2030 Vision and Strategy. The idea is to revamp free economic zones, which play a pivotal role in bringing balanced growth across this country and empowering the Korean economy so that it's more aligned with the post-COVID-19 era. Offering incentives to high-tech and key strategic industries and implementing regulatory reforms and facilitating investment in new industries to achieve innovative growth. That's Korea's free economic zones in the post-pandemic next normal. I'm Sung Iran, the Director General for Free Economic Zone at the Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy in South Korea. Today, I'll talk about the achievements of Korea's free economic zones that have been in operation for about 20 years and our direction going forward in response to the coming post-COVID era. Free economic zones were adopted by the government to attract foreign investments and achieve balanced regional development. Initially, three free economic zones in Incheon, Busan Chine, and Gwangyang Bay were set up in 2003, and then more zones were designated around the country. Today, there are a total of nine free economic zones. By providing various incentives, such as lower local taxes and customs duties, deregulation, and financial and location support, one-stop administrative services to foreign invest companies. Free economic zones have attracted a cumulative total of $19.2 billion in foreign direct investment and more than 6,000 domestic and foreign tenant firms. The government announced the Free Economic Zones 2.0 2030 vision and strategy last year to boost the competitiveness of free economic zones. We have been identifying and implementing policy initiatives to establish free economic zones as a means for driving innovation, along with their original purpose of attracting foreign investment. First of all, the Innovative Ecosystem Project has been launched this year 
to boost the competitiveness of talent firms and carry out joint projects among companies, academia, and research institutions nationwide. Secondly, according to the Free Economic Zone Act, amended in May 2021, each free economic zone shall select a key strategic industry and then draw up development plans by the end of this year. Various incentives are offered to companies investing in key strategic industries inside free economic zones located in non-metropolitan cities. Such benefits include low-price land sales, long-term 50-year leases, permission to enter private contracts, as well as preferential consideration in local investment subsidies. Each free economic zone will have a clear blueprint and a system in place while establishing itself as an optimal environment for investment companies in key strategic industries. Finally, I'll explain our policies to enhance innovation in regulatory matters in relation to free economic zones. Free economic zones have offered an attractive investment climate through the regulatory initiatives, such as the exclusion of regulatory oversight in metropolitan cities and special exemptions from rules related to labor, management, and development. On May 2021, nine free economic zone authorities signed a business agreement with the Korea Institute for Advancement of Technology an institution that oversees the regulatory sandbox. Since then, support for the regulatory applications and identification of regulatory sandbox initiatives for tenant firms have been put in place. We plan to serve as a flexible regulation area to companies by providing a regulatory sandbox demonstration zone. Two newly designated zones in 2020, the Ulsan and Gwangju Free Economic Zone, are emerging as investment hubs for Green New Deal and Digital New Deal, which are key components of the Korean New Deal. As a manufacturing base for Hyundai Motor, which built the world's first hydrogen-powered car in 2013, SOR and SK refinery operations, Ulsan produces 820,000 tons of hydrogen fuel alone, which is half of Korea's total hydrogen fuel production. Pursuing a vision of becoming an energy hub in Northeast Asia, the Ulsan Free Economic Zone aims to foster the hydrogen industry. Hydrogen research institutions such as UNIST, the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Demonstration Center, and the Korea Institute of Energy Research are already tenants in Free Economic Zone. While Hyundai Mobis will invest around $255 million to build a fuel cell factory for hydrogen-powered vehicles by late 2022. In August 2021, the government announced the decision to invest nearly $153 million in the Hydrogen Mobility Cluster Project, which will be completed by 2027. As a part of the project, a hydrogen-powered vehicle parts support center and a hydrogen-powered industrial machinery technology center will be established along with a program to train specialists in hydrogen fuel technology. If this project becomes a success, Ulsan will have a completely integrated value chain in the hydrogen fuel industry and be reborn as an industrial city leading the global hydrogen business. On the other hand, the Gwangju Free Economic Zone plans to foster the artificial intelligence business under the vision of becoming an AI convergence hub. With a budget of approximately $340 million, the Gwangju Free Economic Zone will be the first AI convergence complex in Korea and be completed by 2024. A new AI data center will rank seventh in the world in terms of the computing power when it is completed. It's scheduled to be launched in 2023. NHN, the Korean tech company, has decided to establish a training center for producing artificial intelligence specialists by 2022 and the Artificial Intelligence Research Center by 2023 that will be built in AI Convergence Complex, creating an artificial intelligence business ecosystem that supports the human resource development, research, and startups. The Gwangju Free Economic Zone is expected to become a key hub in artificial intelligence. Now, I'd like to talk about the Incheon Free Economic Zone, the core region of the K-Bio cluster, which has risen in importance 
due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Songdo Bio Cluster in Incheon Free Economic Zone has the world's largest manufacturing capacity within a city limit. Top universities in biopharmaceuticals, such as the University of Utah and Ghent University, have opened their Asian campuses here, creating a strong industry academia research ecosystem. In October 2020, the government made a decision to establish the National Institute for Bioprocessing Research and Training by 2024. This National Institute will be able to train and certify 2,000 biopharmaceutical manufacturing specialists a year. The plan for now is to offer bioprocessing demo training course from November 2021 until the institute officially opens. Also, the Incheon Startup Park was newly opened in February 2021, while the Incheon Free Economic Zone launched a startup incubation program together with Shinan Bank and Celtrion. Now, the Songdo Bio Cluster is taking steps to go beyond being a production base for biopharmaceutical and also becoming a hub for developing new drugs and other products such as vaccines. To achieve this, we announced a plan last year to expand the area of biocluster from 920,000 square meters to 2 million square meters by 2030. In July 2021, IFES succeeded in a securing government project called the K-Bio Lab Hub that will have a budget of $212 million and provide office space and research facility support for pharmaceutical startups developing new drugs. The project will be fully operational by 2025. Furthermore, the Chungbuk and Daegu Gyeongbuk Free Economic Zone are supporting the new drug and medical equipment industries. Government agencies and biomedical facilities are concentrated in the Chungbuk Free Economic Zone, such as the Minister of Food and Drug Safety and New Drug Development Center and National Center for Stem Cell and Regenerative Medicine. They provide robust support for research, licensing, and production for more than 60 companies. In addition, research institutes such as the Institute of Membrane Proteins and Plant-Based Vaccine Center are tenants in the Puang Fusion Tech District, which is part of the Daegu Gyeongbuk Free Economic Zone. Puang University of Science and Technology, which also houses the Synchrotron Radiation Accelerator, provides an ideal environment for new drug research. With such infrastructure in place, Hami Science, a pharmaceutical firm, plans to invest $255 million to build a clinical center, R&D center, and a new drug manufacturing facility by 2030. In the future, we optimistically foresee Huang becoming a business cluster for new drug development through joint collaborations among private sector, academia, and research institutions. There is a saying that goes, a dream you chase alone will merely be a dream. But when you dream together, it turns into a reality. Let's work together to make your investment into a success at Korea's free economic zone. Thank you very much. Free economic zones are centers of growth for new global industries. Let's see what's in store for free economic zones as they move forward. As an oceanside city, Ulsan has also been a strong industrial hub leading South Korea's growth. The shipbuilding and automobile industries grew thanks to a heavy industry complex that was built by the government. Ulsan is now setting a new goal of becoming a leading city in the hydrogen future. With the opening of the Ulsan Free Economic Zone Authority in early 2021, many initiatives have been undertaken to foster a hydrogen fuel-centered industry. Ulsan Gangdae Jaewoo의 경우 수소 산업을 선도할 수 있도록 저희는 그 중심지 역할을 하고 있습니다. 울산은 수소와 관련해서 생산, 또 저장, 운송, 또 활용의 일까지 전 주기적인 산업 생태계가 잘 구축이 되어서. 이를 기반으로 해서 관련 산업의 어떤 대규모 기업 투자 유치는 물론이고 수소 생태계 상생 플랫폼 조성 사업을 하고 있습니다. 
In order to provide a conducive environment for hydrogen fuel, Ursan has designated a special zone for hydrogen green mobility. A project is in progress to demonstrate the feasibility of hydrogen transportation that includes cars, construction machinery, ships and more. The authority comes up with ways to support South Korean and foreign tenants in the Ursan Free Economic Zone. Meanwhile, Ursan has emerged as an attractive place to invest in among global companies. 이미 토탈 주봉 린데드 많은 글로벌 기업들이 울산에 투자하고 있으며 일정 조건을 만족하는 외투 기업에 대해서는 5년간의 관세 면제, 15년간의 취득세 면제 등 조세 감면 혜택을 부여하고 있고요. 또 다양한 규제도 완화되어서 자유로운 경영 활동을 보장하고 있습니다. Ursan Free Economic Zone has chosen the hydrogen-based energy sector as its main focus for attracting companies. With hydrogen research facilities in place, a cluster of companies is being formed inside the hydrogen vehicle parts industrial complex. Notably, the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Demonstration Center is a comprehensive research center that demonstrates the viability of hydrogen fuel cells. Not only is this hydrogen quality lab equipped with a hydrogen quality analysis system that meets international standards, but it also supports the evaluation of hydrogen fuel cells developed by companies. Ulsan is a non-sustainable 뿐만 아니고 정책적인 것까지 기업들에 대한 지원 체계를 갖추고 있다고 보시면 될것 같습니다. Ursan's hydrogen industry is becoming embedded in people's daily lives. In 2019, hydrogen fuel buses were adopted by the city for public transportation, and these new eco-friendly buses convert hydrogen into electricity, which benefits the environment. 수소라는 산업이 도시의 어떤 구성 요소를 차지하는가에 중점을 두어야 한다고 생각합니다. 그래서 우리 시에서는 도시 자체가 수소 중심으로 운영되고 있다는 것을 쉽게 체감할 수 있기 때문에 이런 교통 수단에 대한 우선 도입이 이루어지게 된 것입니다. 2030 울산 하이드로젠 시티 비전. A number of projects are underway to build a hydrogen fuel infrastructure. With the adoption of hydrogen fuel cars, hydrogen refueling stations are also expanding. This refueling station is connected to a hydrogen plant by a 1.3-kilometer long pipe, ensuring a stable supply of hydrogen fuel. 울산의 지역적인 특성이기 때문에 울산의 수소 산업은 원료 공급 면이나 수요 면에서 사용 면에서 충분히 경쟁력이 있다라고 생각을 하고 있습니다. The world's largest liquefied hydrogen plant is under construction in Ursan. This is a joint venture between Hyosung, a Korean company, and Linde, a German gas energy company. The future of hydrogen is taking place in Ursan. We have a focus on the hydrogen industry and the hydrogen industry. If we can continue to make a good job of the hydrogen industry, but investing in foreign markets is a multi-dimensional effort aided by having a rather unique perspective, especially during a global health pandemic and economic crisis. For some, it may require looking past the current negative headlines, uncertainty and confusion, and having a very practical lens focused on the business activity on the ground. For investors, applying a different point of view or mindset can become a paramount advantage for an investment success. Let's try to decipher the paradigm shift in global investment during and post this pandemic and figure out whether South Korea is a safe bet on Invest Korea Week 2021, the Regional Specialization Forum.
the onset of the pandemic exposed how interrelated and globally interconnected the flow of goods and services has become through disruptions to supply chains and mobility. The long-term impact of the pandemic is yet to be known, but many lessons can be learned, including how the trends leading up to and during the pandemic will result not with globalization disappearing, but rather with the approach to globalization changing. The disruption to supply chains during the pandemic highlighted the need to shorten the distance between where products are manufactured to the end consumer to avoid shortages in a future crisis. As a result, companies looking to expand their global footprint will be thinking beyond distribution and sales offices and look to fully immerse themselves into the markets of their consumers to tighten that supply chain. As competition of countries to attract global investment in certain industries increase in the post-COVID era, where does South Korea stand as an investment destination? Well, I'm delighted to be accompanied by an excellent group of panelists today. They're prominent business leaders already investing in the Korean market here with me to share the perspective from their industry's viewpoint. Now to my immediate left is Dirk Lukat. He's the uh, chair of the European Chamber of Commerce here in Korea. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much and hello. Good hello. afternoon. And to his left, Young Hun Sa, uh, CEO of Solvay Korea. Nice to see you. Thanks for this opportunity. Yes. And sitting next to Young Hoon is Kyung Hwa Ha, the president of the Korea Innovative Medicines Consortium. Hello. Good to see you. Nice to see you. And next to him is Jacques Etienne Michel. Um, he's the country managing director of Equinor Korea. 안녕하세요. Nice to meet you. 안녕하세요. And last but not least, uh, right there sitting at the very end is, of course, Daniel Kwan. He's the head of finance at Siemens Healthineers. Hello. Thanks for inviting me. Thank you. So thank you all for being on the panel today. Now, and later in the discussion, we'll also link up with Matthias Bausenwein, president of Urstad Asia Pacific from Taiwan. Now, I want to begin with uh, Korea's investment environment, um, especially in the last two years or so. Uh, let's uh, start with you, Dirk. I mean, um, as South Korea and Europe celebrates 10 years of its Europe-South Korea FTA, um, trade relations between the two have been very robust um, in recent years and months. Um, how would you describe the, the investment trends uh, by European countries to South Korea? Thank you, and a very interesting question indeed. As you've pointed out, um, we have or we are celebrating the 10 years anniversary of the EU Korea FTA. Not only that, but also the 15th year anniversary of the EFTA Korea FTA. So, two very important uh, celebrations this year, and clearly not only looking forward as trends, but also looking a little bit backwards. They have been very beneficial, the FTAs to both Korea and Europe. Uh, we've seen a uh, very in, uh, big increase in, in trade, uh, actually 45%. If we look at 10 years ago, we had uh, 60 billion in trade and that increased to 90 billion, right? So in that perspective, um, I think it has been a very beneficial FTA for both Europe and Korea. Uh, looking forward, in terms of the trends, um, clearly there are very prominent trends. Uh, the semiconductor industry is very much in the news, but so is um, also battery production uh, and, and a few others, right? So um, linked to those, I believe, uh, is uh, digitalization is one of the very strong areas of growth, but also artificial intelligence and uh, deep learning, machine learning are clearly areas uh, which we will focus on. Well, you know, speaking of European firms investing in Korea, I want to talk about Solvay Korea. Solvay is, of course, an international chemicals company uh, headquartered in Brussels. I understand that Solvay Korea first uh, came into South Korea back in 1975, and it was also Solvay's first, um, I suppose, investment in Asia. Um, how has uh, things changed or, um, over the years? I mean, has Solvay brought in any tangible, I suppose, results from Korea? Yeah, so since uh, 1975, Solvay invested uh, uh, first uh, location 
uh, in Asia or so Korea, and then we invest in silica. And then we applied the silica at the time for shoe sole. And then later on, we expanded the, this application to toothpaste. And then we are very proud uh, Solvay was a pioneer for applying to a uh, tire. And then we call this as a green tire. And then now we also invest into a uh, RNI center in a uh, Korean uh, uh, national university. And then this is a, a kind of a win-win story, I believe, uh, for Korean government point of view. And we're trying to build this win-win story in the future as well. Solvay Gunsan site uh, main product is uh, silica, which we believe uh, magic powder. And then a key material application is uh, a green tire, which is saving around 6 to 7 percentage of uh, oil consumption. So this is a, a block change of uh, key innovation. And our EUA RNI center, we also research mainly on uh, battery and then also automotive uh, materials and then also uh, electronics as well. So overall, this uh, key area we are working and then uh, researching is a part of a uh, uh, Green New Deal. And then so we do believe this uh, Green New Deal is a part of our opportunity. Well, um, this is all part of building a more sustainable economy. And as Korea takes part of that and as the entire world shifts its focus to that and uh, I suppose a core part of that would be renewable energy. And speaking of renewable energy, we cannot but um, speak to you, Jacques and um, Michelle. Equinor used to be a traditional energy uh, company. So basically, you used to dig fossil fuel, am I right? And you transformed yourself to, um, into a renewable energy firm. What made Equinor, which is a Norwegian company, choose Korea as your site? Yeah, thank you. Uh, Equinor is a global, uh, global energy provider. And uh, uh, as a leader in the floating offshore wind, uh, we see great opportunities in, in Korea uh, to develop uh, our expertise uh, within uh, floating offshore wind. Uh, we demonstrated this, uh, this expertise by uh, starting the, the world's first uh, floating offshore wind, uh, High Winds Cotton, in 2017. Uh, at the moment, uh, Korea is uh, heavily dependent on uh, fossil fuels uh, import, 85% of, of the mix today in Korea. And uh, the, the, the New Deal, the Green New Deal, as you mentioned, uh, is, uh, shows a commitment from the Korean authorities in uh, increasing the renewable uh, to uh, achieve the net zero uh, by 2050. So when we look at entering uh, new markets, uh, we really look at uh, four areas. Uh, the first one is uh, about regulatory and political support. Uh, I guess Korea demonstrated that uh, with the Green New Deal. Um, then we look at the uh, scalability uh, of the possibilities of growing in, in the country. And we saw this potential in Korea. As well, we, we look at uh, uh, if there is a supply chain in place. Uh, and I will come back a bit later on. on the, uh, but definitely, Korea has a supply chain in place. And finally, is there a market? And uh, yeah, there is a market outlook in, in Korea for green energy. So all these four shows us that uh, Korea had the potential uh, in these areas. And we wanted to enter there, uh, looking at uh, how we could apply. Uh, COVID-19, uh, the pandemic, has brought on various changes to different sectors of the economy. And um, there are winners and losers. And one of the winners, I would say, would be biopharmaceuticals industry. And it has undergone tremendous changes um, during and, I suppose, post-COVID as well. Uh, Kyungwa, let us know, what kind of changes is the biopharmaceutical industry going through? Yeah. Biopharma industry is getting more, uh, I think it's not a winner or loser, but it's getting more important because it covers uh, just for a business, but also the public health. Uh, putting to the last two years, uh, as COVID-19 becomes a big pandemic and serious to everybody, uh, I think uh, Korea has, uh, has been uh, really tried to protect 
uh, this pandemic. Uh, and as you know, there is a lot of good uh, quality of uh, COVID diagnostic uh, from Korea, as well as uh, we are working as a big CMO, for example, uh, AstraZeneca vaccine by a Korean companies uh, as a CMO, uh, as well as uh, uh, Moderna vaccine uh, in recently. So uh, these kinds of, uh, uh, over the last uh, two years, uh, has made a lot of uh, uh, dynamics also for Korea biopharma industry. So I think uh, it's now really a time for evolution and uh, we are very much ready to work with uh, foreign investors. So for, the, for South Korea's biopharma industry, this is definitely a, um, a crisis that's turning into an opportunity, hopefully. And, and you know, speaking of winners from this pandemic, I don't know whether that's the case, but Siemens Health and Ears, I mean, how are you faring and how are you riding out this pandemic? Thank you for the question. Um, Siemens Health in Years, uh, firstly, is not biopharmaceutical, mm -hmm. right? It's a different healthcare segment, mm -hmm. and we are active, and we are, I think, uh, at the forefront of innovation, based also on digital transformation these days, yeah, in the um, areas of imaging diagnostics, laboratory diagnostics, therapy, um, and also these days um, with the acquisition of Varian, um, actually oncology uh, radiation therapy. Um, there we see, uh, have seen uh, a, b a big reduction of demand simply because, especially at the beginning, people were afraid to, to go um, uh, and take, to go to a hospital where, a hospital where there's many people, right? Um, that impact has uh, uh, reduced, so it has swung back, but uh, in the laboratory diagnostics um, area, I think we are not yet back at fully normal. Yeah? Um, Going forward, um, also with the demographic changes that are rapidly taking place here in Korea, uh, like aging society, um, like urbanization, um, I think um, the progress in um, um, the uh, improvement of healthcare for the Korean society will continue. And uh, based upon that, it's uh, our firm belief um, that Siemens Health and Years um, will also see and type, uh, participate in that growth. Yeah? And with all with the portfolio that now um, the Siemens, I want to say the group, yeah, uh, Siemens or AG or Siemens Health and Years AG and um, Siemens Energy, um, we are addressing actually all the needs of a society like Korea that also wants to address with this uh, new Green Deal uh, policy uh, and also the Digital uh, uh, Act um, policies, yeah. Um, to transform, uh, to transform the infrastructure of a country uh, to be a more modern and a more, uh, uh, more advanced one in the future. Right, so you're reaping the benefits from the uh, Green New Deal and the Digital New Deal. So two pillars of the right. Green New Deal. Right. Um, Derek, I want to come back to you. Not only are you the chair of uh, the European Chamber of Commerce, but you're also the uh, CEO of Schenker Korea, a mm -hmm. logistics company. Mm -hmm. um, success in the logistics indes industry depends on having a solid industrial base and other elements, of course, in place. Tell us how uh, Schenker entered Korea in the first place and um, how how company's operation here is. Schenker has grown with Korea, with the industry in Korea. And um, we are providing the various services in air freight, ocean freight, contract logistics, inland transport. And as the industry advances, we also advance in our services, in our capabilities. Uh, we are focusing on innovation and uh, are also wanting to add on the growth we have achieved in the past and uh, therefore we will be investing in a new facility uh, basically starting this year and construction will end uh, next year. Uh, an investment of, of 50 million euro which in our industry is a quite substantial amount. So very excited, very much looking forward uh, to that growth here in Korea. Well, you know, um, this is my second year hosting um, Invest Korea Week. And uh, from what, what I've learned last year and this year is that a lot of foreign investors are supposed to find um, 
South Korea's free economic zones and regionally specialized clusters, very attractive places to invest in. And of course, as a logistics company, you're based in the Incheon free economic zone that where the, um, the port is. Uh, tell us what the appeal is of being there. Very important and good question. Incheon, first of all, as an airport, of course, has a lot of importance. It's the third largest uh, global cargo airport and the fifth largest in terms of international passengers. So a very important hub, not only regionally, but, but also globally connecting continents to some extent. Right? So that is um, clearly one of the reasons why we are present. There is, of course, also the Incheon port right, uh, very close by. And all of that is, is really integrated together in the free economic zone, which provides a lot of benefits to us as a logistic company in terms of uh, the bonded uh, solutions we can offer, uh, the very swift custom clearances for import and export, and uh, what we also use our facilities for. And we actually invested uh, 10 over years in our first facility in the Incheon free economic zone is uh, to use them as, as regional hubs right? because of the airport and because of the very good infrastructure there. Right, and um, Kyunghwa, I'm sure the Songdo bio cluster cannot go unmentioned for the biopharma cluster um, with both R&D as well as manufacturing and production capabilities here. Uh, how far has South Korea's biopharma industry come? Mm -hmm. I think uh, Songdo is uh, one of the very successful uh, bio cluster uh, in the global. Uh, actually, uh, they start with uh, uh, tax incentives and management service by the government, uh, as like other uh, bio clusters in the world. But I think there are a couple of key success factors why they uh, become so famous. I think number one is uh, they have uh, old integration from uh, education, technology, and productions. So uh, I think uh, uh, this uh, Songdo is uh, becomes very integrated uh, from uh, education, uh, technology, and productions. And there are already 64 foreign affiliated companies are there, so that they can work together. I think that's already uh, good dynamics for bio industry. Uh, and uh, secondly, as you know, uh, there are two big giants like uh, Samsung Biologic and Celtrion. Uh, right now, they have uh, 560,000 liters and going to be around a million. Uh, that means as a one town in the global, uh, Songdo is uh, one of the biggest uh, city uh, who can produce biologics. Uh, another thing is that particularly uh, this year, uh, they have a, a bio research and training center they opened named as K Nybert. And, and Nybert is uh, actually coming from uh, the European island, uh, which is uh, one of the uh, best in class uh, for uh, training and research of uh, biologic uh, production and process. And this will be a, a great sense of uh, uh, advantage uh, in competing to other uh, regional cities in the, in the global. Uh, last but not the least, as you know, Songdo is uh, very a center. Uh, by three hours uh, flight, you can reach uh, 150 cities over 1 million population. So that's a great another good reason why Songdo is becomes very attractive place. I mean, I, I think it's an exemplary case of an innovation cluster that the government, the South Korean government, has been pushing for. Um, but of course, uh, for wind power, especially offshore, floating offshore wind power, that's a business that requires um, a huge investment, I'm, and I'm sure, and uh, which means that when choosing your location, extensive feasibility uh, studies are conducted. Um, you chose... Uh, Ulsan as your offshore location, what was the uh, deciding factor for Equinor to choose that location? As I said a bit earlier, when we, we look at entering a new market, we, we look at four areas. And uh, 
let's see how does this apply to Ulsan then. Uh, uh, political support. Uh, we, we, the industry uh, get the great support, the offshore wind industry get the great support from uh, Ulsan City. And that's the that's first thing. Um, then look at scalability. Um, and uh, we, Equina, we saw the, the potential uh, together with uh, other developers to develop one gigawatt. Um, and totally, uh, the industry uh, is looking at six gigawatt in Ulsan. And that's great because that developed a real new industry in the area, uh, benefiting everybody uh, wanting to, to develop offshore wind and floating offshore wind. Uh, then the plus supply chain, uh, a bit related to the first one, the second one here. Uh, Ulsan on um, the uh, southeast coast has great shipping yards uh, with great competencies. Uh, and we see that we can use this competence. And as well, we look at how we can even increase the competence uh, more specifically uh, in the offshore wind industry. And finally, the market outlook. Um, Ulsan is an area with a significant industry and population uh, which will need uh, uh, green power in the future. So all this together uh, really make us thinking if we succeed, not Equino alone, but offshore wind industry, if we succeed, uh, Ulsan and the Ulsan area, southeast area of Korea, uh, could uh, really be a, a, a hub for a new industry uh, in the floating uh, wind industry and the wind industry as such. Right, absolutely. And Equinor is, of course, the first um, floating offshore wind farm and looking to become the largest as well. But speaking of offshore wind power, there is another firm that we'd like to take a look at. We meet Matthias Bausenwein, uh, the Asia-Pacific president of Ersted. He joins us virtually from Taiwan. Great to see you, Matthias. Now, Ersted is currently building a large-scale wind farm in Incheon. So I'd like to know uh, the reasoning behind selecting Incheon as your entry point into the Korean market. Uh, we built a 1.6 gigawatt project in Incheon. Um, it's our flagship project for Korea. We think that uh, this project can uh, bring clean uh, electricity to up to 1.3 million households in Korea. It's 70 kilometers from shore. Uh, we see very good wind conditions, very good soil conditions. Uh, we are comfortable from an engineering perspective that this is a good place to be. And also the uh, fishery ministry has outlined a potential of up to 30 gigawatt uh, of offshore wind in the Incheon area. All in all, we want to make this project happen, uh, contribute with our knowledge, work together with Korean partners and uh, build this project by 2026. Um, in, in, in that time frame, it will create a lot of high quality jobs. It will uh, be a, a, a catalyzer for like community benefits and uh, for building up an industry and ecosystem for offshore wind in, in and around the uh, Incheon city. Well, Ersted uh, has made a successful transition from a traditional energy to renewable energy uh, company as its main driver of growth. Um, besides wind power, are there any other renewable energy related projects that your company is pursuing here in South Korea? I mean, what expectations do you have regarding Korea's Green New Deal initiative? First of all, let me start and talk about the Green New Deal. Um, I think we see um, a very strong uh, commitment and strong targets which uh, enable um, a momentum which make make things happen uh, 12 gigawatt of offshore wind uh, carbon neut neutrality uh, mandatory uh, targets um, we see um, the green fuel cell vehicles um, being rolled out on the streets by 2040 um, so all in all I think it sends the right signals and we are very um, positive about it and um, as Ersted, and thank you for asking about our transition, um, we, as Ersted, we, we are willing and open and keen to share our knowledge in, in transitioning um, energy systems, but also as a company from black to green, the last 10 to 15 years have been uh, remarkable and we are um, open to um, bring this knowledge also to our peers and to governments. Um, what uh, I think is important to say, we are not only the global market leader in offshore wind, um, we are also uh, very strong in North America in onshore wind. We are building our platform for onshore wind also in Europe now. We have uh, green hydrogen and green fuels 
very high on our agenda in Europe mainly, but also looking at other markets in Europe. We are part of, of um, several commercial or pilot projects for green hydrogen and uh, we uh, are doing that in Denmark but also in other markets like West Coast 100 in Germany or CH2 land in the Netherlands. Um, if you look at all this I think we can bring a lot of knowledge also to Korea. That's also where we have made an MOU with POSCO um, on the green hydrogen. So we have a wider portfolio now um, with the aim to become a really uh, green uh, energy major um, and um, the leading uh, renewable company uh, in the world. Um, I think that is um, what very well fits to our vision to create a world that runs entirely on green energy. And uh, we hope very much, and let me say that as concluding remarks, that we are able to um, bring this knowledge uh, to Korea. That being said, I'd like to thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to also explain a bit about who Ersted is uh, and, and what we could do. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Matthias Bazenwein, of President um, of Ersted Asia Pacific in Taiwan. Thank you. Would you say that, um, Dirk, would you say that uh, what are the pros and cons of doing business in Korea? Right, pros and cons. Um, Clearly, Korea is a very developed uh, country, also in terms of economy. And what uh, I personally see is uh, there is a constant growth, right? So throughout the last years and even in the last year with uh, the pandemic really hit us the hardest, uh, there was a small decline. But if you compare that to other developed countries, it was actually not that severe. And going into this year, uh, 2021, right, we are predicting a 4% GDP growth, which again is, is uh, for a developed country, a very uh, positive growth element, right? And then uh, that actually part with um, the uh, investments which are made by Korean companies in Korea uh, and related also to the export growth uh, are very positive aspects. Yonkun, you have also um, much experience uh, doing business in other countries um, in Asia. Uh, how, what would you say is unique about Korea's industrial structure and its, its niche market? Um, where is Silver Korea uh, headed from now on here in Korea taking advantage of that particular factor? Thanks for a good question. I also used to stay uh, one of a South Asian country. And then also we had uh, some manufacturing uh, site and also our office as well. I think each country has a different uh, portfolio in terms of uh, different uh, focus and the market situation. I think Korea, I would say this country, uh, there are very rich uh, ecosystem in terms of uh, automotive, electronics, shipbuilding, and there are a lot of uh, industrial operations. So I would say Korea is uh, very good on uh, this uh, uh, manufacturing and then also our uh, government uh, is uh, COTRA and then uh, local government. They are very active in terms of uh, inducing of uh, these uh, uh, investments. And then also uh, Korea very uh, uh, good of FTA uh, position and then also a uh, good quality of uh, resource. Uh, and then also uh, infra is uh, very strong. So I think Korea always... Uh, very good, uh, one of a strong country, and then we can looking for to invest in the future as well. And of course, uh, Kyunghwa, um, you you probably would not want to comment about the, uh, you know, about why South Korea is an appealing investment destination, as you you're the president of an association of uh, pharmaceutical companies, uh, non-profit especially, but wh what would you say is the, um, is the trend, investment trend in the pharmaceutical business here in Korea and all around the globe? Well, I think the biopharma industry is getting also very much dynamic right now. Uh, and uh, the Korea is uh, one of the center well, they can we can play together. I mean, basically three elements. I think number one, Korea has a, a good and hardworking people. Uh, Korea has a high education, and uh, traditionally Koreans are very good at uh, math and science. And having said, they have a, uh, quite numbers of researchers. 
In biopharma industry, uh, research science is uh, very much important. And that's the one reason. And secondly, we have a fairly good uh, size of uh, development, which means uh, clinical studies. Uh, do you know that Seoul is uh, consecutively four years in the last time uh, the, the, the best place for to run a global clinical trial? So there is a good uh, physicians and doctors and hospitals. So that's a good place to work together. And as I said before, that production capacity uh, is uh, simply a, one of the top area in the world. And uh, last but not the least, uh, talking to the business, I think uh, Korea is a uh, fairly sizable country in terms of uh, uh, the revenue generation. Uh, and I think uh, in the ranking globally, Korea biopharma industry is about uh, 11 to 13. So it's not a small uh, market. But if you are looking for uh, beyond Korea, like as I said, uh, the Asia Pacific market, like uh, North Asia or Southeast Asia, why don't you think Korea as a gateway for uh, expanding your business uh, from Korea to uh, Asia Pac? Uh, I think that, that's uh, all about uh, the attractiveness. Uh, but I think uh, biopharma industry is, is a little bit of a, uh, key points that you have to consider because this is a public health as well as a private business as well. So there are two sides of uh, coins and we have to uh, satisfy the regulation uh, for the uh, drug development and commercialization. And having said, I think uh, you should have a networking before you make a good decision. So, for example, the government uh, having give you a lot of uh, incentives and management service. And I think uh, Investment Korea is also a good partner for talk before you uh, make a final decision. Uh, and Kimco, like us, a non-profit organization, we can help. We can give a real picture of a networking for ph biopharma industry. So more than happy to help. Right, so any foreign pharmaceutical companies that want to enter Korea, you can uh, get in touch with our Kyunghwa here. Um, and of course, uh, Jacques Dieng, you've laid out various factors why Korea is an appealing destination, investment destination for offshore wind farms. But um, what are some pros and cons? I mean, in just the average person's mind, I would think, wouldn't you need abundance of natural resources like wind. Uh, I don't know if Korea is the most uh, fitting country for that, geographic-wise. I guess that's uh, it's a good question. And um, and that's why before we, we start uh, a project, before we will take an uh, uh, investment decision, uh, we are doing a lot of studies now as we speak, um, measuring uh, wind, temperatures, currents, uh, waves, uh, to understand very well how, uh, what are the conditions in Korea. And, and the east coast of, uh, of uh, Korea seems to have uh, good uh, wind conditions. So that's, that's why uh, all those things uh, make that we think uh, Korea can uh, be a leader or uh, one of the pioneer in the, in the floating offshore wind uh, further. And I spoke a lot about scalability and why is it so important, you know? Of course, today, uh, floating offshore wind is more expensive than bottom fix, you know? It's new technology and it's further from shore. It's many other things that we have to take into consideration. But if we manage to build uh, a scalability, not only Equino, but Orsted and other developers, uh, we managed to, to manage to build uh, scalability, then we will get the cost down. And that's why as well we think Korea can be a, a major player to, to help us to, to build this new industry, putting the cost down and then get the floating offshore with competitive uh, against other renewables uh, resources. Absolutely. And um, last but not least, Daniel, I mean, what does South Korea represent um, to Siemens as an investment destination? Uh, in your view, uh, you know, the size and the characteristics of the Korean market um, and the production here, how, how does it appeal to the Siemens uh, health engineers? 
Um, I want to firstly say that um, Siemens and um, its affiliates uh, are present in almost every country, or in many countries, let me put it that way. But we are not present with uh, manufacturing in every country. Mm. And we have a large manufacturing operations here in Korea in the health seniors um, sector. Uh, we came here uh, 20 years ago with that manufacturing footprint, also at that time again with the support from the Korean government. Um, and uh, at that time we have seen uh, uh, strategic advantages, uh, that's why we invested here. There was still like a kind of a growing mindset, being more, uh, uh, not maybe not the mindset that you have in the absolutely highest industrialized countries, but also with a little bit of the speed and the cost sensitiveness. Yeah. Um, uh, but at the same time, you had uh, also already um, very highly educated workforces here. Uh, and um, by now for sure, but at that time also already, um, we considered um, Korea to be uh, an advanced manufacturing country. Advanced manufacturing, not just manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. And that includes then also uh, the supply chain that you need to build up your manufacturing uh, uh, fa your factory here. Last but not least, um, um, the academic research level that is here, present here in, Co in Korea with um, universities like Postec or KAIS, with whom we have been working together, uh, is another uh, reason uh, why Korea is an attractive um, place for investment and continuous, continuous research and, um, of course, operations. Right, so um, hopefully all these strengths um, will further excel as we head into the what's called a next normal or the new normal post COVID-19. And I'm, I'm gathering that your advice to all of our foreign investors who are looking to invest in the Korean market is that, come on in, you won't regret it, right? Are we agreeing sure. on this? Sure. Right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'd like to thank uh, each and every one of you for a uh, wonderful discussion today. And um, thank you for coming and uh, sharing your stories and experience with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a post-COVID economy comes tentatively into view, governments around the world are beginning to outline their economic recovery plans to match vaccine deployment timetables. Coronavirus has also reaffirmed the central role of innovation in new industries as clearly demonstrated by the delivery of the Pfizer and Moderna COVID-19 vaccines in record time. We all hope to see an end of COVID-19 soon enough, which will allow us to head gradually back towards a new era of next normal. But as we coexist with the coronavirus for the time being, this transition will surely create opportunities for innovators and investors looking to test out new ideas and deploy pent up capital. Well, that's a wrap of Invest Korea Week 2021 brought to you by Korea's Ministry of Trade, Industry and Energy and Kotra on Arirang TV. Thank you all for staying throughout. Wherever you are in the world, stay safe and stay strong. We'll get through this. Take care.